Okay, friends. Uh, so we have seen uh, the general characteristics of Clostridium species, and we have also seen uh, that uh, why they are important. Now they can cause severe kind of diseases like tetanus, botulism, and also some food poisoning related with the Clostridium perfringens. Right now, in this video, we'll be talking about the infection, infection or infectivity about this Clostridium species. Now for the infection part, what we know that there are several different species of Clostridium. They can cause different kind of disease. Now let's say the first type are Clostridium perfringens. Clostridium perfringens. Now this Clostridium perfringens, they can cause disease uh, or simply food poisoning. So let me write. They can cause food poisoning. Okay. And for this food poisoning of by the Clostridium perfringens, for this uh, particular uh, of onset, it usually results in nausea. So let me write. Usually results in nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea after the onset. Okay. It usually uh, results in this kind of symptoms. Now it's uh, it's a similar type of symptoms we see in case of kind of Enterobacter or or uh, enter uh, E. coli uh, kind of infections but in this case what we know is that for, for the onset of this kind of infections like food poisoning by uh, Clostridium perfringens it requires a high dose of Clostridium perfringens almost 10 to the power 8 dose of Clostridium perfringens under 2 to 3 hours 2 to 3 hours if this occurs in those cases only they can cause in this this enteric diseases otherwise it won't because usually this clostridium perfringens is killed the vegetative cell of clostridium perfringens is usually killed if it is boiled properly right so proper boiling proper boiling will sorry should be one L anyways proper boiling will kill this bacteria but if the boiling is not proper in those cases in those cases, spores of Clostridium perfringens survives. So as the spores are survived, if the boiling is not proper, the spore will, will, will cause diseases or will cause endangerous effects like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and these symptoms right after the infection. And all this case, the infection is uh, set place due to the release of a kind of enterotoxin. So let me write the release of enterotoxin. First, kind of toxin we are talking about release of enterotoxin now the enterotoxin we are talking about they are acting inside the enteric region that's why they are called enterotoxin now this enterotoxin is also de designated as ET now this enterotoxin mechanism is kind of similar like the toxin we have seen in case of cholera right so if this is the cell lining so let me draw the cell lining for you if this is the cell lining mucosa it, it, this is a intestinal cell which is having microvilli and villi and all these things so microvilli is there now if enterotoxin come and bind to it so let's say this is the enterotoxin it comes and bind after the binding of this enterotoxin what it does it 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 make the cell it keep the cell in the active state at is adenylate cyclase uh, signaling so let me write so adenylate cyclase signaling is on this adenylate cycle signaling is placed on throughout the time now as it is placed on throughout the time it is uh, keeping all this content in this line as a result it will start releasing it will start releasing massive amount of water with sodium ion outside so as the water and sodium ion is coming out with stool with stool we simply know this thing as diarrhea so simply it is written here right so simply call as diarrhea right so that's the kind of symptom we can see using this enterotoxin produced by clostridium perfringens right now let's come to another kind of infection that they cause and this is the most dangerous type of infection and this one is known as gas gangrene and it is caused by clostridium perfringens obviously uh, this is gas gangrene okay and this is also called as uh, i forget what is it's called actually anyways this is also uh, this this gas gangrene is 
is a kind of severe condition, it's a kind of unique kind of infection. Now, why? Because let us talk about the gas ganglion. So let's say here this is say this is a this is a tissue. This is a layer of tissue or layer of tissue. Now in this case, it is infected by this this bacteria, Clostridium bacteria in somewhere. So it's simple skin, if it is getting any wound there, as a result of this wound or cut, it enters there into our tissue. And inside the tissue, when it is attached uh, with, with the cell layers, or, uh, the cells of a tissue of our, our hand or our leg, due to a result of any kind of accident, so let me write, it, it usually causes, uh, after any kind of accident or any kind of surgical, surgical, procedure and these things like that okay so let's say these are attached and they start releasing a kind of toxin now the toxin they release for causing the disease like gas gangrene is a kind of exotoxin so let me write they start releasing some exotoxin factors here so these are exotoxins now this exotoxins these exotoxins are of different type like alpha, beta, gamma and all the different type. Now among all of them the most dangerous kind are alpha toxin. Alpha toxins, right? So exotoxins like alpha toxins are released outside. Now this, agro, this, this alpha toxin is having the capability of degrading degrading the cellular layer and also degrading some ground materials like hyaluronic acid and also fibronectin and all these things. They can also degrade some kind of cells like a red blood cell. So they can having the property of hemolysis, right? So anyways, this, this enterotoxins are released. Now after the release of this enterotoxin, what they can do, this enterotoxin will go and start degrading. So let me write here. So they will start degrading things. So as a result of this enterotoxin activity, they can degrade, degrade tissue and also ground material ground like like basal lamina so ground materials right now the ground materials we are talking about example of the ground material is hyaluronic hyaluronic acid okay hyaluronic acid and so like that okay and oh, how they can damage it because they are having or they are containing a kind of molecule the uh, exotoxin is containing let's say dna's enzyme and sorry not dna dna's dna's enzyme dna's enzyme and also they co contain hyaluronidase 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 so using all this enzyme they start to degrade sorry using all the enzymes they start to degrade are tissue and ground materials as they're degrading tissues and ground materials they start to evade through our tissue now as they're evading through there as they're evading through what they're doing these toxins are also degrading things down and so as it's degrading what we it finally results it results in tissue necrosis right tissue necrosis so simply call it tissue necrosis and along with the tissue necrosis what it is doing is that it is it is utilizing the carbohydrate that are present in these cells. So we know that this, this cells all obviously has carbohydrate in it. So they start taking the carbohydrate present in the cell. So as they start taking carbohydrate here and what they are producing, they are producing gas because they are fermenting, right? Fermenting carbohydrate from, from the tissues this is a kind of important so as they are fermenting carbohydrate from the tissues they are producing gases right and this gas is foul smelled foul smelled gas now a lot of gases are produced and these gases are produced in the bottom layers of skin and our tissue cells so as a result of that this gas is start to accumulate there and it results in a kind of palpation so it results in the kind of palpation and then this kind of thing and it's also related with necrosis of tissues so and tissue necrosis as well as the formation of gas combining both these things together we call it as gas gangrene gas gangrene okay so that's what we know as a gas gangrene and after the after all these things occur what what our tissue actually looks like now so so let's say here the tissue will look something like this. It's, it's, it's horribly damaged. It's actually horribly damaged here. 
in several different regions and not only that now as the damaging is beginning from this layer and it, as it is moving further if it reaches the bloodstream so let me write if it reaches the bloodstream in those cases it becomes much more dangerous because after reaching the bloodstream it can lyse red blood cell so hemolysis will take place or will set place and along with hemolysis it can also be spread to other locations so spread spreading of the toxin to other location other tissues actually so once uh, this kind of infection is on set it can move from one place to another place if it reaches the bloodstream so it is becoming dangerous and dangerous that's why this kind of gas gangrene is dangerous and remember in all this kind of infection whether it is enterotoxin infection like clostridium perfringens or the infection by uh, by uh, uh, after this uh, gas gangrene or food poisoning whatever on all these cases usually this kind of gas gangrene this results in the contact of our skin with the bacteria and the contact of the skin with bacteria is due to any kind of wound right so wound or wound treatment is very very important during this kind of clostridium infections so not only the for the clostridium uh, perfringens but also for clostridium tetanus, uh, tetanus and as well as clostridium botulinum in all these cases uh, you must have treated the wound so wound treatment is really really so wound treatment is really or wound processing so let me write so wound treatment or wound processing is really really important to regulate uh, this kind of clostridium infections in your body right so otherwise this kind of infection will be on set and you, you won't have anything to do there okay so in this video we have talked about the infection as well as we have also talked about the pathogenicity remember because this part what you have discussed till now is also part of pathogenicity so we won't be doing a video separate video on pathogenicity because it's already conducted here so infection and pathogenicity so let me write here so infection and pathogenicity patho Jenny City. So we've already talked about both of them. In the future video, we'll be talking about the treatment and that will be done. So that's it. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.